Hello, my name is Douglas Block. I'm an author and a depression survivor. Welcome to your depression recovery channel, where each week we talk about practical tools and coping strategies to heal from depression and anxiety. The title of today's video is My Best Advice for Avoiding Anxiety. But as you know, <clears throat> those of you who follow along, we need to start with a joke. This will be quick. It's a pun. I love puns. So did Shakespeare. So why was Moby Dick treated with respect? Because he was the Prince of Wales. <laughs> I, I love puns. What can I tell you? All right, let's get back to something serious here. Uh, yes, uh, best advice for avoiding for, for avoiding anxiety. You know, fifty-five million Americans have anxiety. That's a lot of people. You know, and about twenty-eight million people have depressed. What is that? Seventy-three million. That's like one out of four people is a little bit nuts. Uh, but you know, here we are living in the modern world. Well. You know, I did a video on anxiety. It was, I think it was called How to Rewire Your Anxious Brain. And I, I talked about a number of ways to avoid it. So the title of this video was a little bit misleading because there's a number of ways, many ways to avoid anxiety or to treat anxiety. One is exercise, um, pace breathing, uh, putting your head in cold water. But here's another one that I haven't talked about before, and that's getting occupied. Let me give you an example. During my 96-97 depressive episode, I was so agitated that I couldn't be left alone. So I attended something called a partial hospitalization program. It went every day, Monday through Friday, 9.30 to 3.30, and we had groups, individual therapy, they provided lunch. It was kind of like going to school. But then would come Saturday morning. I would wake up my normal anxious self, I would look ahead to the day, and I would panic. I would panic because I had nothing planned nothing that would take my mind off the anxiety and get me occupied. When I woke up in that agitated state, I felt as if I were going to be swallowed up by the void. You see, there's something in the human heart and spirit that needs to be occupied. Uh, people don't do well when they're doing nothing. As a matter of fact, I'm going to play for you right now a lyric from one of my favorite Bob Dylan songs, Too Much of Nothing, as performed by the legendary uh, folk group Peter, Paul, and Mary. Too much of nothing doesn't just make fellows mean, it makes them bored, anxious, and depressed. If we look back to the Victorian era and we look at the wives and the daughters of aristocrats, they had all of their material needs met. They didn't have to work, and yet they weren't happy. This is exactly why in the very popular TV series on, on PBS, Downton Abbey, the youngest of the three daughters, Sybil, decides to volunteer in a hospital during World War I rather than staying home and feeling useless. Here's another story about the power of getting occupied. Recently, we had a new gal join our group named Susan. She arrived on the heels of a 10-month episode of major depression during which she had to quit her job. That happens so much when people get depressed or anxious. They have to leave work. Anyway, uh, she was finally well enough to actually you know, get out of day treatment and come to group. But uh, her, initially, her daily uh, routine went like this. She would take her daughter, drop her off to school, and then she would go home and spend the whole day at home uh, being anxious and ruminating. She said things like, what am I going to do? I've got all day long with nothing to do. I have all this time on my hands. I'm, I used to be a really successful computer programmer, and how did I get into this mess, and how am I ever going to get out? Then, one day, in a stroke of good fortune, Susan was accepted to an eight-week course for people wanting to get up to date on their computer skills. Now, uh, she had a different routine. Uh, she would drop her daughter off to school and she would go to class. So she would come to group and say, wow, I, I, things are really changing for me. I now bicycle to the class after I drop my daughter off to school. When I get there, I'm around people. People are coming up to me because I used to be a programmer and they're asking me questions, so I feel acknowledged and important. Uh, my anxiety is gone and I no longer dread the day to come. So what changed for her? It wasn't a medication. It wasn't a pill, it wasn't a substance, it was getting a basic human need met. That's what changed. It's interesting that the root for the word occupied has the same root as the word occupation. This may explain why work is so often therapeutic and why Sigmund Freud, the father of modern psychology, said mental health is the ability to love and to work. Many years ago, I heard a minister say that work is a gift of God. I had no idea what he was talking about. I could never hold a nine-to-five job, as my being depressed meant I couldn't wake up that early. 
Then one day I got what he was saying. By work he meant getting involved, getting occupied in a creative task or focus. And that often means getting involved with other people. This explains the paradox in the life of, or the apparent paradox in the life of Mary Todd Lincoln, who like her husband, President Lincoln, was a lifelong depressive. While her husband was trying to save the Union, she remained at home and suffered from depression, anxiety, and even some paranoia. She was so high strung and uptight that the slightest noise would send her into fits and get her hysterical. Then one day she did something that seemed like a really rash decision. She decided to volunteer as a nurse in a Union hospital for the Union soldiers. Well, it had just the opposite effect that people thought because bombs were dropping all around her, there was explosions and noises, and yet she was so focused and so occupied in tending to the needs of the soldiers, she didn't even hear them. Yet when she was at home doing nothing, she was scared to death at the slightest noise. So once again, we see the power of being occupied in her life, and she was able to have a distinguished career as a nurse in the Civil War. This has been Douglas Block. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. I hope you liked it and got something from it. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you did enjoy it, please give it a like. And you can also um, write your comments in the comments section to ask me some questions or email me douglasblock at gmail.com. I'd also like you to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so. Uh, to subscribe, simply wait to the closing credits and when my photo shows, click on that and you'll be taken to the subscribe page. If you want to go to my website, healingfromdepression.com, click on the book. And if you want to see the videos that are displayed, click on those and you'll be taken right to them. And until we meet again, I wish you the best in staying occupied and feeling well and healthy and at peace. Thank you.